Imagine being able to connect an unlimited number of speakers to your phone and having them all play whatever you want. That reality might be here as Bluetooth, SIG, the governing body for Bluetooth, is finally announcing that Bluetooth LE Audio is ready to go. What's even more amazing about this is that when you consider wireless earbuds, each one of those could be individually connected and therefore could be getting a different stream. That, combined with the new LC3 codec, which provides better quality with lower required speeds, means that Bluetooth LE audio should be something you look for with any tech device going forward. And yes, there is some backwards compatibility opportunity. So, we get to wait and see who takes advantage of it. Either way, the Bluetooth folks get a big thumbs up from me and Google gets a big question from me. Can you fix your speaker control with this? Speaking of which, this was the end of a Google Nest Mini that never quite worked right at what you would call a rage room. Actually, there were many casualties that night, but with all the features Google Nest speakers have lost in the last few months, this was a much needed release of pent up anger and energy. <clears throat> Fueling my rage with Google this month was what seems like the end of the memory feature Google has been building for over three years. Removals of the code for memory in beta versions of the Google app suggest that memory is probably at its end too. Which would coincide with the removal of location-based reminders last month and a big thumbs down to Google. You gotta fix this pattern now. For now, get ready for more fast, hard-hitting news in Brian's lightning round of smart home news as I take you around the tech and smart home industry in just a few minutes. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and let's get right back into it with something from Google that might actually excite you. If you're enrolled in the Google Nest Preview Program on your Nest Hub Max, you'll find a new option for managing Bluetooth on the display itself. It lets you pair the device as a speaker with other devices or with other speakers. It's much easier versus the Google Home app, and I've used the Nest Hub Max as a Bluetooth speaker many times without experiencing any delays. This is all because Google has dropped their Fuchsia operating system onto the Nest Hub Max, and it's definitely worth a thumbs up as Google keeps development on that new operating system moving forward. When you pair that with the new look and talk feature that has begun rollout, you are looking at some pretty nice on-device features for the Nest Hub Max, and that leaves it as one of my favorite smart displays on the market today. One of the things that holds us back from really expanding smart homes and the internet of things in general is having electrical storage capacity. And I love showing you guys these cutting edge research projects that have the opportunity to solve one of those big problems. This one out of a university in Korea found a way to create storage capacity on stone products like tiles and countertops and backsplashes and other rough surfaces that would go into your home. There is a manufacturing process behind this and we still need to charge what is essentially a capacitor, but this is a bigger piece to the puzzle than I think most people will realize. Even better, they hit it with a hammer lots to make sure it wouldn't break. So thumbs up for hammers and for cutting edge research changing our future. This sounds scary at first blush, but The Verge published an article attempting to panic you about Ring having given out footage 11 times to law enforcement last year on an emergency basis and without your consent. Now understand that if they did this, it was on both law enforcement and ring deeming it as an emergency situation. It's not exactly a staggering number given how many cameras are out there under Ring's brand, so this article does feel like pushing our buttons for the most part. But Amazon does this too. And there are many other times where Ring and Amazon will provide footage to law enforcement. So consider this and maybe adjust your settings. Opt in to delete recordings on Amazon and enable end-to-end -end encryption on Ring cameras where you can to avoid some of this. And otherwise, just think about where you're putting cameras and if you're okay with your feeds being used like this. And it's a situation like this where a camera becomes important and, dare I say, heartwarming. Here's a person having an anxiety attack 
and one of those cameras caught this moment of support. Now, Amazon gave us some new interesting features last month with Prime subscribers in the US now getting Grubhub Plus, which is food delivery and normally costs $10 a month. Behind the scenes though, Amazon could end up buying as much as 15% of Grubhub over the term of this agreement between the two companies. You should also notice a pretty good update to the devices page that breaks your groups into pretty little pictures and your speaker groups into tiles. That's all in the Amazon app, but I still think Amazon needs to do some work there to really make that a better app. Now, speaking of putting cameras in places you maybe shouldn't, the Outlet 2 has just been released. It's a baby monitoring camera, which doesn't sound interesting at all until you combine it with the Dream Sock, which you put on your little one for some extra monitoring. When all these powers combine, you get predictive AI that could let you, as a parent, know when your child might awaken. One of the most beloved devices could be coming back. It looks like Google is placing snippets of code into the Google Home app for a possible new Chromecast audio. Of course, it's possible that this device never sees the light of day, but there have been so many requests for this device to come back that I have to think Google will update the hardware and push one out. If they do so, they would get a pretty big thumbs up from me, but not today. And I can finally talk about this one, even though I've had it for almost two months now. This is the Akara E1 curtain driver, and it is an incredibly efficient motor paired with a really smart design to move your curtains. My favorite feature on it is getting it to move slowly over a period of time to any position I'd like. It's a little start and stop e, but it's wild stuff and I can get Amazon to execute those through scene. It's connected by Zigbee to their hub and like most Akara products, it's going to be part of the matter updates that they've said will come to the M2, the M1S, the G2H and the G3 cameras will all become matter compatible very soon. And here's a wild piece of news for you Akara and SmartThings lovers. It looks like, per SmartThings beat, that your Akara products might get edge drivers too. So that's like a hundred thumbs up for Akara on this and it's a great competitor for SwitchBot Curtain. IKEA hit us with news of their matter compatible hub last month, but now they have some new smart LED strips coming. The silver glands, which is coming, and the middle LED and the sky drag being available already. All with HomeKit compatibility and all with budget pricing. Remember though, you have to purchase a driver and some power cabling with most of IKEA's smart lighting products, so make sure you read the fine print there. I received a new smart button from Third Reality and a new temperature and humidity sensor. Both are Zigbee and both immediately paired with my SmartThings hub, and I know this smart button should work with Amazon eventually. I love these little inexpensive devices, and I love seeing a maker continue to make strong budget items for us to use in easy ways. On the flip side of cheap is Nanoleaf, who surprised me by saying they'd been around for 10 years, which tells us all that selling products with neat features for really high products is a tried and true method for sticking around for a long time. But anyways, they released some black Nanoleaf panels, and I gotta say, these are the first ones I've looked at with interest from them. So thumbs up to Nanoleaf for going black. Will they go back though? Here are six updates for SmartThings users that you can be excited about in about 10 seconds. SmartThings Labs feature called Wake Up Gently will become a routine for everyone soon. SmartThings Wi-Fi and Connect Home devices now have SmartThings Edge features. And speaking of local execution, local scenes are now in beta and should be coming to the SmartThings app and hubs. SmartThings and Philips Hue will have an improved music sync feature coming later this year, and the Home Connectivity Alliance that Samsung announced at CES 2022 looks like it will add thousands of smart appliances to the SmartThings app in the coming year. Now finally, I might get an interview with the head of SmartThings, so what questions do you have for them? The start of the end of the SmartThings IDE happened a long time ago, but we just took another step a few weeks ago. Normally I tell you to head to account.smartthings.com to log into the IDE. However, 
When you log in there today, you get redirected to the newer beta control interface. If you want to get to the SmartThings IDE now, head to graph.api.smartthings.com, log in there, and you should be good to go. Here's an interesting addition for those of you using IFT to automate parts of your life. The button widget on iOS just got an option for Siri shortcuts, which means you can start IFT applets from Siri on your phone. Plus, there's some really interesting new triggers available for iRobots with IFT. For example, when you start a specific room with the bot or when your bot finishes in a room, you can start another automation within IFT. I've never seen those triggers anywhere else, so that's exciting. And IFT gets a thumbs up from me for continuing to develop and doing something really useful here. Let's rapid fire some updates. Govi has Razer Chroma support now. That will allow you to sync Govi lights with your PC, so sweet. What's funny is Yeelight is making their own app for syncing your lights, but they already have Razer Chroma support. I don't get it. Sonos has their voice assistant rolling, but it's music only so far, and it is causing some issues with the Google Assistant when used in tandem. The Facebook Watch app died on Apple TVs. Hue now lets you create widgets in the setting page on their app. Genie stopped supporting the Google Assistant for some reason, and sadly, I don't know if it's coming back. And in case you want to hear the voice of someone who's passed, Amazon is trying to give you the chance to put them on your Echo speakers. Not sure how I feel about that one. But maybe my favorite rapid fire update is that Elon Musk has told us that steam will come to Tesla's. It seems like a monthly tradition where I get to tell you about a product or service dying and going away. And I want to keep telling you these things so you make different purchasing decisions going forward. So as I record this, Wink is again going through a huge outage. Please just move on. Also, Hive continues to deconstruct their system with leak sensors and indoor and outdoor cameras stopping in September of next year. I've read reports on both of these situations and essentially it comes down to big funding going in, bleeding money with aggressive product development and marketing, and never really getting enough income to support all of that. It's going to be common, folks, and drives the whole subscription model of business in the smart home space. So let's continue to get smarter with our purchases and give these two companies a big thumbs down. Channel members here on Automate Your Life really make everything possible for me to continue to bring you this news and our other video formats that help you save time in your life through home automation and other technology. So I want to thank those people and for all of you, you can join the channel, get early access to videos like this, and get more benefits including direct support from me. So hit that join button now. Otherwise, if you want to see a little bit more about the products I showed today from Acara, Third Reality, or just some other pretty incredible products, then check out the video that's up on screen where I showcase all the latest and greatest products in the smart home and tech industry. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate automate.